So over here, we've got the Jackery Explorer 2000, and over here, we have the Jackery Home Power 3000. So which of these two power stations should you spend your money on? I've dealt a lot with power stations over the past couple of years, but this is my first exposure to Jackery's products. And I've got a few thoughts about them, but let's go through some of the important tech specs first. These power stations are obviously named based off of their battery capacity. The Explorer 2000 has a 2000 watt hour battery, and the Home Power 3000 has 50% more capacity with its 3000 watt hour battery and perhaps unsurprisingly how much these things weigh is directly proportional to their battery capacity for example the explorer 2000 weighs 40 pounds and the home power 3000 weighs 50 percent more or 60 pounds and Jackery has claimed that this is the world's smallest three kilowatt hour LFP generator. The Explorer 2000 has a nice swinging handle that you can grip with one hand. And Home Power 3000 has two solid grips on either side, which are great for carrying or moving it around. As far as the Explorer and Home Power naming scheme, I suppose most people can lift 40 pounds. So Explorer makes sense there. But at 60 pounds, the Home Power 3000 is more of a stay at home unit, hence the name home power. Also, the home power has a 30 amp plug, which will allow you to plug it into an RV or a transfer switch and actually power your home with it in the event of an outage. That port just is not available on the Explorer 2000. In either case, when you charge these power stations, they're very quiet, which is nice. I've dealt with some power stations that have their fans screaming every time you do anything with them. The prices change on these things all the time, so I'm not really going to talk too much about that. But if you're watching this video the same day it was released, there's a great Prime Day promo going on that can save you some decent money on whatever setup you're trying to get. And if you already have your own solar panels, you can buy an MC4 to 8020 adapter from third party sellers to connect your system to these power stations. Jackery doesn't sell any of their own adapters for that purpose as far as I can tell, but the connector types are pretty standard and the cables aren't hard to find for like $15. The Home Power 3000 can support up to one kilowatt of solar. If you're getting more than two of Jackery's 200 watt solar panels for the Home Power 3000, you're also going to want to get Jackery's connector accessory because you cannot otherwise connect more than two of them without it. You can also opt to buy two of Jackery's 500 watt solar panels so you don't have to deal with connecting a bunch of panels in series, but they're a little bit more expensive. And the Explorer 2000 can only support up to 400 watts of solar, so you won't need more than two of Jackery's 200 watt solar panels if you're getting this one. The cable that connects to the solar panels has a USB output directly from the panel. You don't have to plug it into the power station. You got USB-C and USB-A. And oddly enough, I've actually been able to befriend a hummingbird in my backyard. Uh, I made a whole series about it on TikTok. I just haven't posted a bunch on YouTube. I might do that pretty soon. When it comes to output, the Explorer 2000 can power almost anything you might throw at it on a camping trip or in an emergency, like a refrigerator, a coffee maker, a kettle, a microwave oven, even portable air conditioners. But the Home Power 3000 will be able to power those things for a longer period of time and more of them at the same time. More specifically, the Explorer 2000 will get you 2200 watts of sustained output or 18.3 amps. And the Home Power 3000 will get you up to 3600 watts of sustained output while using the RV plug, which is 30 amps or 2400 watts from the AC outlets on the front, which is a full 20 amp circuit. So as an example, this can power the toaster or a kettle but not the toaster and the kettle at the same time. And the Home Power 3000 can power them both at the same time. They also both have surge ratings at double their output rating, which helps with starting things like air conditioners. bad for the little Explorer 2000 is powering this air conditioner with no issues. Quick question for you, what do you prefer more in a power station? Is it portability or more raw power output? Let me know in the comments which one you prefer and I'll try and review more units based on that. The Explorer 2000 has one USB-A output and two USB-C outputs, but only one of these two USB-C outputs is 100 watts. The other one is 30 watts. And the Home Power 3000 has two of each type of USB port 
and the USB-C outputs are both 100 watts. Beyond all those tech spec differences, the Explorer has this handy little light feature, which is really useful in any situation where there's no electricity otherwise available because you won't need to bring a light with you or even waste a plug on the front to plug a light in if you didn't also bring a power strip. Which one of these would I recommend? Well, they're both good tools, but if you don't have a transfer switch or any way to use that 30 amp plug, you're leaving a lot of functionality on the table by buying the Home Power 3000. And I would say instead, just go with something like the Explorer. It will still power a standard full-size refrigerator for about 20 hours or pretty much everything else you're going to throw at it while on a camping trip for a whole weekend. And it won't break your back carrying it around. It also costs like half as much. But if you do have an RV or a transfer switch in your house, the Home Power 3000 is going to be a lot more useful for you. And personally, I prefer to have this one in my garage in the event of an outage, particularly because I like to get the most out of its solar charging capabilities, which will keep my critical appliances running indefinitely. I got two solar panels mounted up to this pergola up here, and that'll give me one That'll give me a little bit over a kilowatt of solar that I use to charge power stations in my garage. And I plug those into my transfer switch that I had installed not too long ago, and that lets me power all my freezers and refrigerators indefinitely. Of course, there is a cloudy day once in a while, and if you're worried about that, Jackery does have other options available in bigger sizes and with expansion batteries, but that's beyond the scope of this video and out of budget for the range that we're discussing. These batteries both have lithium iron phosphate or LFP chemistry, which has become the standard and for good reason. Compared to older lithium ion types, the LFP is a safer, more stable and longer lasting chemistry. Even if you fully charged and discharged these batteries every single day, they would retain about 80% of their original capacity after 10 years. Plus they come with a five year warranty for that added peace of mind. So let's do a quick head to head before wrapping up. The battery is 2000 watt hours versus 3000 watt hours. This one weighs 40 pounds and this one weighs 60 pounds. The max output for this one is 2200 watts and this one is 3600 watts. The max solar input is 400 watts versus 1000 watts. And we've got one 100 watt USB-C port and two 100 watt USB-C ports. And this one does not have the RV plug and this one does. So once you've figured out which one works best for your setup, I've got affiliate links in the description of this video for both of them. Thank you, Jackery, for providing the equipment for this video. And thank you for watching. Peace.